What's up, my comic comrades? Earlier this week, we posted our breakdown on everything we know about Marvel's recently announced Avengers, the Kang Dynasty. And as promised, we're following that up today with a deep dive into the second Avengers film Marvel Studios announced at San Diego Comic-Con, Avengers Secret Wars. The Secret Wars film will be part of phase six and the second Avengers movie we're getting in 2025. However, even more so than the Kang Dynasty story, Secret Wars has a broad history with the Marvel Universe with two different iterations of the story. Specifically, the introduction of characters as significant as the Beyonder and of course, Victor Von Doom. In our episode of the Kang Dynasty, which you can watch right here, we mentioned that based on some of the pieces we are seeing come together, especially in Wakanda Forever, there is a strong possibility that we could see Doctor Doom included sooner rather than later. Because it looks like Marvel Studios may be looking to lean on the 2015 version of Secret Wars, or possibly some hybrid of the two original 80 Secret Wars and the 2015 Secret Wars. With that said, we're going to go into the comic storylines and see how these pieces might start fitting together with what we've already seen in Phase 4 of the MCU, as well as what we know is coming in Phase 5. So let's start with the original storyline. Shall we? The original 1980s Secret Wars storyline was a 12-issue series that ran from May 1984 to April 1985 and was written by Jim Shooter and drawn by Mike Zeck and Bob Layton. Secret Wars issue 1 opens with a shot of space in an unknown galaxy and two space stations where we see several of our favorite heroes and villains suddenly appear. The hero team consists of Captain America, Captain Marvel, She-Hulk, Wasp, Thor, Iron Man, Hawkeye, Professor X, Storm, Nightcrawler, Cyclops, Rogue, Colossus, Wolverine, Lockheed, Mr. Fantastic, The Thing, Human Torch, Magneto, and Spider-Man. While on the second space station, the villain team consists of Enchantress, Ultron, Absorbing Man, Wrecker, Thunderball, Piledriver, Bulldozer, Galactus, Kane, Molecule Man, The Lizard, Dr. Octopus, and Dr. Doom. Obviously, both the hero and villain teams are confused as to what's going on and look outside the space stations to see the galaxy suddenly get destroyed, leaving only a single star. And next to it, a single planet begins to form. While the two groups debate amongst themselves about what's going Going on, a rip opens in the sky and a voice starts to say, I am from beyond. Slay your enemies and all your desires shall be yours. Nothing you dream of is impossible for me to accomplish. Galactus charges towards the rift to confront the Beyonder, but hits a barrier that sends him back in an explosion, with Professor X saying, to the beyond, even Galactus is less than a fly. Demonstrating just how powerful this Beyonder truly is. In short, we learn that this cosmic being known as the Beyonder is fascinated by the superheroes and villains of Earth and thinks they have great potential. So he chose a group of heroes and villains and teleported them to fight on a planet he created called Battle World, stocked full of alien technology and weapons for them to use against one another. Once gathered, the heroes argue about Magneto being considered a villain by the Beyonder, causing Magneto to fly away, leaving the team. And Doctor Doom tries to convince the villains that they shouldn't play along with whatever game they're playing, and instead should forget about fighting and reach out to the Beyonder for answers on immortality and unlimited power. The villains refuse, focus on the prize, so Doom buries them in rubble before attempting to leave in an alien pod ship to speak with Reed Richards and the heroes, but ends up getting shot down by Kang using an alien turret. The heroes hear the explosion and find Doom, but when Captain America offers hope, Doom arrogantly refuses, blasting them and flying off. After this, the villains catch up and a huge battle ensues between the heroes and villains, while Doom simultaneously finds Galactus and tries to convince him to approach the Beyonder, but just gets ignored. The heroes then win their first battle with the villains, taking Enchantress, Kang, and the Wrecking Crew prisoner, while the rest of the villains fall back. And Doctor Doom rebuilds Ultron, who was destroyed by Galactus, in the space station. Doom and Ultron then attack the rest of the villains at their bases so Doom can take charge of the villain team. I know there's a lot going on, you can already see a lot of pieces and ingredients of the MCU's current course, but we've only just begun. Back with the villains, however, Doom creates the villainous Volcana and Titania. That's right, Doctor Doom created Titania, who's making her MCU debut in She-Hulk Attorney at Law. We don't know yet if Doctor Doom is connected to her at all in She-Hulk, but considering the fact that Doctor Doom created her in the Secret Wars comic, along with the Fantastic Four and Secret Wars films now announced for Phase 6, and some of the clues being laid down in the Wakanda Forever trailer, you can see why we think there's a good chance Doom is likely going to be revealed in the MCU very soon. Anyway, Doom then has his new warriors lead an assault on the hero base to free the prisoners. With Titania and Volcana leading the attack, the heroes get overpowered and are forced to retreat, as the villains start throwing debris of the base at them while Molecule Man works on lifting a mountain in the distance, moving it over the Avengers and dropping it on them. The heroes only survive because the Hulk, being the powerhouse he is, was able to hold up the mountain long enough for the heroes to break out in issue 4, giving us one of the most epic Hulk feats of all time. Meanwhile, the X-Men having left the heroes find Magneto's fortress and explain they think it would be mutually advantageous to join forces. Later, Galactus summons his ship to consume the planet, and Doctor Doom uses an attack on the heroes to sneak off onto Galactus' ship, finding Claw and having him join the villains. Around this time, Secret Wars gave us the first appearance of Julia Carpenter, the second Spider-Woman. And later in issue 8, Spider-Man uses a piece of technology to replace his damaged suit, but gets a black blob that spreads across his suit, giving us symbiote suit Spider-Man. Since Spider-Man got the symbiote suit in the Secret Wars comics, it's possible that the MCU could use the Secret Wars movie to finally give us Tom Holland's symbiote
of Spider-Man, which would be awesome to see. In issue 9 of Secret Wars, Galactus begins devouring the planet, and Mr. Fantastic starts thinking that Galactus winning must be why they're here. So Galactus can get his wish and end his hunger, saving any future world he might consume. He tries to convince the rest of the heroes that they shouldn't try to stop Galactus, that ending Galactus' hunger is more important than them. But the heroes refuse and head off to stop Galactus, meeting with the X-Men along the way. And later, the Fantastic Four join the fight, Reed saying he changed his mind because he wants to see his son born. With Galactus drained from having summoned his ship, the heroes gain the upper hand, and Galactus flies back to his homeworld ship. The heroes then think they won, but Mr. Fantastic explains that Galactus doesn't need his ship to devour worlds. It just makes it more efficient, and now he wants to devour his own ship to get the power to fight them off and finish devouring the world. Meanwhile, Doctor Doom is waiting with the machine he created with Claw to absorb Galactus' power and add it to his own. Galactus powers up, and Doom is able to steal his power, using it to approach the Beyonder and temporarily steal the Beyonder's power. Now being insanely powerful, Doom summons the heroes to his new Doom Tower, where he tells the heroes the Beyonder no longer exists. There is no more enemy, and he is now the mightiest person in the universe. But in the background, the remaining spirit of the Beyonder has been traveling through bodies of the heroes, eventually getting to Claw to get close to Doom. The heroes discuss Doom's intentions and decide that the power is too much for one man and they need to stop. And suddenly Doom kills them all with a massive burst of energy. But the Beyonder through Claw starts manipulating Doom to fully release his power, convincing him that one of the healers from the tribe of the battle world was able to save the heroes. Whether that's what actually happened or Doom's power made it happen, it turns out to be true and the heroes had survived. They attack Doom's base and the Beyonder uses the attack to take his power back from Doom, teleporting Doom and Claw away. Afterwards, everyone would find out that the Beyonder's energy Doom released turned Battleworld into a granting engine for people on the planet, like the biggest genie lamp in the universe. So Reed Richards built a device to take everyone back home. But the Thing decides to stay and explore for a year since the planet lets him change back into his human form at will. So the Thing sends the last of the heroes home and Secret Wars comes to an end, with lasting ramifications for the Marvel Universe, including She-Hulk replacing the Thing as the fourth member of the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man getting a new black costume, which would later become Venom, and even Colossus ending his relationship with Kitty Pride. The MCU could pull a lot of cool aspects of the Secret Wars run for the film, especially with Doctor Doom, the X-Men, and Galactus being such big parts of the story. They could introduce Black Suit Spider-Man and start a Venom storyline for Tom Holland, and hopefully we might see some insane moments for the Hulk. Like holding up a freaking mountain, unlike anything we've seen from the Hulk in the MCU thus far. But while I'd personally like them to pull mainly from the original 1980 Secret Wars storyline, they're most likely going to combine the story with the 2015 Secret Wars run to further expand the MCU in a way that feels more connective with their first 10 years of storytelling. In theory, that is. Whoa, look at that. A shirt change. And that's because before I go any further, I've got to point out this awesome, insanely comfortable shirt I'm wearing from Roosevelt's new Black Panther collection because Wakanda forever. Roosevelt, spelled R-S-V-L-T-S, has such a great lineup of unique licensed and unlicensed apparel, including button downs like the one I'm wearing, but also graphic tees, swimwear, and more. We actually told you guys about their Star Wars and DC collection over the past several weeks, but they also have a dope Marvel collection with themed apparel designed around Spider-Man, Iron Man, Avengers, and a bunch more. And now they've added their new Black Panther lineup to the mix. These are a few of the great Marvel designs you could choose from, but they have a ton more available online at roosevelt.com forward slash variant comics. Because alongside their collections for Marvel, DC, and Star Wars, Roosevelt also carries additional licensed apparel for a wide range of fan favorite franchises in geekdom and pop culture. And did I mention how insanely comfortable their shirts are? Well, if I did, I'm saying it again. I'm telling you, you gotta check out Roosevelt Roosevelt's gear for yourself. So jump over to roosevelt.com forward slash variant comics and add some Roosevelt's gear to your lineup. Then at checkout, use promo code variant comics to take 20% off your first order. You're gonna dig it. Trust me. Okay, now back to the 2015 Secret Wars event. The basic premise begins with the incursion of the Marvel 616 universe and the Ultimate Universe, with the characters of both universes meeting each other. The incursions are bound to destroy both of the universes, so the Mr. Fantastics from each come together and make plans to survive with small groups in a life raft. The two worlds then collide, but the remnants are combined mysteriously with pieces of other universes to form a new universe, creating the Battle World. This new Battle World universe, consisting of various different universes, is divided into a bunch of different territories that are mostly self contained, all being ruled by God Emperor Doctor Doom, empowered by the enslaved Molecule Man and wielding the Beyonder's powers. Doctor Strange, who ended up being Doctor Doom's sheriff, ends up finding Miles from the Ultimate's life raft, then the 616 life raft, and realizes they're from his universe. So he explains to them that they've been in stasis for eight years. The Beyonders were responsible for the incursions between their worlds, and he, Doctor Doom, and Molecule Man 
were able to kill the Beyonders and take their powers. Doctor Doom using it to save them all by creating Battle Worlds. Ultimately, the story ends in issue 9 when Black Panther wields the Infinity Gauntlet to battle Doctor Doom as a distraction, while Reed Richards fights Molecule Man. Doom realizes this and teleports to Molecule Man to stop Reed, but Molecule Man strips Doom of his powers so they could have a fair fight. After an epic battle, Doom ends up confessing that Mr. Fantastic would have done better reshaping the world, and Molecule Man hearing this decides to give the Beyonders powers to Mr. Fantastic, destroying Battle World. Black Panther then uses the reality gem of the Infinity Gauntlet to restore his world, and Molecule Man takes Mr. Fantastic, his family, and the Future Foundation to rebuild the multiverse one universe at a time. It's a really solid story, and it makes a lot of sense that Marvel would want to pull elements from both this storyline and the 1980 Secret Wars comics for the MCU film, especially with the 2015 comics having a more similar cast of characters that we've seen from the MCU, like Carl Danvers Captain Marvel and Doctor Strange, along with the fact that Battle World could be a combination of multiple universes and fit nicely with what we've seen Marvel building thus far in Phase 4, and what we know they're planning on rolling out with Phase 6, which of course is officially called the Multiverse Saga. One thing I hope they take from the 1980s comics, however, is giving Galactus a role in the plot. We've all wanted Galactus in the MCU for a long time now, and with the Fantastic Four movie set to release early in Phase 6, we really hope Galactus is part of the plan. It would also be cool if the X-Men had a meaningful part in this story too. We know they're introducing mutants with that tease from the Miss Marvel finale, but with nothing announced for the X-Men, only time's gonna tell. The big takeaway, however, is that Doctor Doom is a massive part of both the comics run, so whether we see him defeat the Beyonder and absorb his power like in the 1980s comics, Comics, or we get God Emperor Doom like the 2015 story, Doom is probably going to be a massive part of the film and overall multiverse saga alongside King the Conqueror. And I cannot wait to see it. There's also another element to the Doom angle that we haven't discussed yet, and that is the potential inclusion of elements of the Doom War story in Wakanda Forever. And we'll be doing another full episode on that in the next week or so to further the coming Doctor Doom theory. But that wraps up our look at the Secret Wars storylines from both the 1984 and 2015, and how they may tie into the direction of the MCU. Let us know what you guys think and what you want the MCU to that most from the Secret Wars comics down in the comments. First up for the week of August 10th, we have Axe Judgment Day Issue 2. As the world shakes, an unlikely group of heroes and less than heroes gather to find a peaceful solution. Now we have Black Panther Issue 8. The battle for Wakanda comes to a head. If you have not been reading this new Black Panther solo title and you like Black Panther, you need to jump on it. Here we have Ghost Rider Vengeance Forever Issue 1. Johnny Blaze, still reeling from his time in Hayden's Falls, seeks the console of a seer named Necro, the tattooist who uses needles to bring dark truths to the surface. Next we have Predator Issue 1. The new Prey movie is freaking fantastic and you could stream it on Hulu. So if you like the Predator, jump on his brand new series. And finally, we have Deceased War of the Undead Gods Issue 1. This is the final series in the Deceased Universe that has the Undead God Dark Side fight Earth's heroes. It will be bittersweet seeing the series come to an end. And that's going to bring today's episode of Variant to a close, but if you like this video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment. It always helps us grow. But other than that, I'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.